Apparently we blow up one structure and the AI just builds another. Luckily this is fine for us because uh, we can kind of blow them up faster than the AI can build them. And there is kind of no counter to the stupidly strong mammoth tank. Hello there ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Spiffing Brit and today we're playing an absolute classic. It is Command and Conquer, which has recently just been re-released in a remastered sense to Steam. And let me just say, it's absolutely fantastic. All of the nostalgia is back, but this time we've updated graphics and new recordings from the legend Kane himself. This is quite possibly one of the most unique games in existence. It comes from a time when game developers were going absolutely insane with their inspirations. And the fantastic studio of Westwood here, which you'll probably know for making an absolutely metric ton of games, but most famously the Command and Conquer series, it would seem that the designers for this game decided to just get absolutely buggered up one evening and come up with the greatest idea for the cheesiest RTS game ever known to man. And thus the Command and Conquer series was born. Now many of you will remember this game, of course, when it first released back in 1995, it was an absolute meaty game using an entire 8 megabytes of RAM to run. My goodness, can you imagine that now? And oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, that wasn't all. The developers even decided to add in such crazy and zany technologies like, say, hand-drawn sprites and graphics, which would take up 40 megabytes of hard drive disk space. Good lord, what an insane quantity of data could they have packed into this one game? Now, it doesn't actually mean much in today's sense because you can effectively fit this entire game thousands of times over onto a little USB stick, but back in the day this game actually came on two CDs. It would actually take quite a while to install onto a PC, but what a unique experience it was. And the remasters managed to capture all of the charm of the Command and Conquer series and so much more. But of course, why am I here today? Well, I'm here to relive one of my most favourite and oldest exploits, which definitely threw this game's balance in the direction of the player. The strategy which I'm going to show off today is absolutely hilarious. It's a brilliant way of destroying the AI in the game, as well as also annoying your friends in a multiplayer setting. Effectively, you can destroy just about every single bit of unit pathfinding this game has to offer with one very easy construction, all thanks to the humble and powerful sandbag. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, just a Morrison's plastic bag filled up with a bit of dirt from Morecambe Bay is enough to stop an entire militarized modern space army. Trust me, the 1990s were a completely different time. Some of you would think nuclear bombs would be the most powerful weapon, but no, 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 sandbags. Trust me, it's the sandbags. Now we're going to be starting a brand new skirmish game because as fun as it would be to actually live out the entirety of this game's experience and go through the campaign, we sadly don't have time to sit down and play this entire thing. But trust me, it's well worth your time. Considering how cheap this game is, you should probably go pick it up for the nostalgia value alone. Now what actually is the Command and Conquer universe all about? Well, it's about one very simple thing, Tiberium. Now in the game's universe, a massive meteorite flies down from outer space and lands in the Tiber River in Italy. This then causes a fair bit of chaos because this is effectively a brand new resource with unknown capabilities. For most people on the planet it didn't change much, but for one legendary man leading the Brotherhood of Nod called Kane, he managed to amass a massive culty fanbase and using their combined powers harness the power of Tiberium before anyone else. The game takes place with basically most of the western world uniting under NATO, with the player generally trying to defeat the culty Brotherhood. Alternatively you can play as the Brotherhood and invade the entirety of Africa, the choice is yours, and honestly both campaigns are a great laugh and really good fun. Biggest issue with the campaigns though ladies and gentlemen, and the game in general, is the AI. Now the thing is, the AI in this game, it's actually surprisingly good. In easy settings, it's very easy, you're sat there and effectively the AI won't attack you, or when it does it'll do it in nice small waves, and generally most players with a basic certificate of attempt in the school of turtling for strategic fort will be able to smash an easy AI by simply not lifting a finger. The medium AI actually provides a fun little bit of a challenge to a player and will adapt to a player's strategy and do quite well. The hard AI, however, will just simply go balls to the walls and cheat out of thin air. They will absolutely smash you and they will not stop until the entirety of your base is annihilated off of this entire planet. Now this exploit probably wouldn't actually be anywhere near as popular as well known as it is if it hadn't been for the fact that the hard AI is such a challenge to play against, because it is effectively a well-known and highly recommended strategy strategy to use this exploit to simply defeat the hard AI. If you don't, you best have the incredible click rate of a StarCraft 2 Pro. Because this is an RTS ladies and gentlemen, and there's no pause function. There's also none of those intuitive user features that you'll be used to from modern RTS games. Going back to this game is an absolute joy, but it's also a blessing to remind us of how far the RTS genre has come. But this really was the single bad boy which kicked it off, and now in glorious HD we're ready to return and trust me, I'm very excited. Now, this 
this is actually looking absolutely perfectly set up, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to throw ourselves into a fantastic 4v4 map, but this time in actually a 1v1 scenario against a medium AI, which should put up a decent amount of competition, but nothing too overwhelming so that I can't actually talk about what I'm doing in the video. Now, of course, make sure you sat back, relax, you have a nice warm cup of tea, and heck, if you're feeling especially fantastic and want to avoid working in the Tiberium mines, which are pretty deadly, then you can always dodge the mining conscription by leaving a like on this video. So I'm in the game and I have my fantastic Yorkshire tea prepared next to me, which means I'm ready to become a pro gamer. Although actually by that, what I mean is I'm actually just going to start building a bunch of sandbags. You see, sandbags take two seconds to build and we're going to be actually hearing the fact that the construction complete sound is happening a lot. So much so in fact that I'm going to turn that down because otherwise it's going to actually drive me insane. So once again, we're going to buy ourselves more sandbags. They only cost $50. Bearing in mind, we start out with $10,000, so we actually have a fair amount. We're then also going to start exploring the map with our lovely little scout jeep. Now, we don't actually need to set up our empire's economy at all, although we can build ourselves a refinery to get early mineral mining going. But for the most part, we're just going to be trying to work out roughly where the AI borders are and trying to block them off as soon as possible. All I know is that the AI spawns in this rough corner over there, and so logically, all I need to do to stop them from progressing in the game is to block them off from several parts of the map, like say this section here to the left, and access to the huge Tiberium deposit in the middle of the map. Oh, and let's place down our first refinery. Lovely stuff. And with that, we can even get a comm center up and running. Oh, now that looks lovely. Now the AI is going to be expanding very quickly early on, because naturally they're not constrained by such feeble limitations as human fingers, and can just spam out an infinite quantity of buildings as and when they feel like it. So naturally we need to cut off their expansion as soon as possible, and the best way to do that is to just spam our way up the side of the map with this horrific snaky line of sandbags. Trust me, it's not beautiful, but it is the most efficient way to get the job done. Now this entire bottom section of the map is fine, we just need to actually make sure that we have a nice clear border with the AI, probably off to the right hand side. We're even going to move our one tank over there just to properly secure those borders. Now we will need to eventually secure this portion of the map, but definitely the focus is on cutting the AI off from the left hand side, and then we can start worrying about the right hand side of the map. Now because we start out with 10,000 money in the banks, this puts us in a lovely spot where we effectively have infinite quantities of stuff to waste, because Tiberium is effectively the source of all of our money, and because there's so much of it around on the map, and we're going to basically be getting all of it for ourselves, we don't particularly need to worry about money. And also sandbags are really cheap, and considering they're the only thing I'm spending my money on, money is certainly in great abundance. Now once again we're making great progress up the side of the map here, this is going very nicely. I'm pretty sure we're actually drawing ourselves close to the enemy base. It should be around here somewhere. Oh cool, a supply crate. Grab that. Oh, what on earth did I just pick up? A nuclear strike? <gasps> Lovely. You'd love to see it. Oh, get that, get our jeep out of there. Come on, get out of there my friend. I forgot I accidentally had these boxes down all around the map. This will be perfect. There's another supply box there. Let's pick that up. Oh, lovely, some money. That was exactly what I needed, he says sarcastically. Yes, money is actually pretty much useless for us. Uh, we don't need it at all. It's kind of redundant for everything we have planned. Anyway, all we need to do is just keep building up our fantastic sandbag wall and expanding our glorious empire. Ah, oh, there we go. Fantastic stuff. Now, this is where we're actually starting to reach the cutoff point against the AI, and our sandbags are now going to section off this entire left-hand side of the map from them. This will stop the AI basically trying to path through any of our borders over here. So there we go. We're just going to cut off the map nice and easily. And of course, once we've done this, we then immediately need to cut off this choke point here, and then we should be able to turtle for the next half an hour, whilst the AI quite simply can't can't react. Now I have once again been put in a glorious situation where these sandbags line up perfectly so as to completely block off this entire left hand side here, meaning the AI can now no longer use this bridge to get over here. Yes, in fact for this unit here to path around to this section of the map it has to cross this entire section and go around, meaning the AI now can't access any of this. Oh and now the AI has started taunting me. Come and get some. I'm not getting anything. It's you my friend who will have to actually get something. Oh and sadly our one poor infantry dude over there has just tragically passed away in a completely unexpected and unforeseen murderous incident. But in doing so, we have also discovered a fantastic box over there full of goodies for us to receive, so we're definitely going to be focusing on that. Now, if the AI looks like it's getting slightly too far ahead, all is good because we can just drop a nuclear bomb on them. Uh, nuclear bombs are pretty good because as you can see from their unit card, they are strong versus everything. In this entire time, however, we haven't actually built up a, a single army unit, and as such, you can probably guess the best strategy the AI could take against this kind of random
random player would be to just zerg rush their base. However, the AI doesn't do that. It wants to build up a decent economy before it starts sending out waves to attack. But by then, it will already be too late. Anyway, our advanced weapons factory is done, so we can now build a little advanced scout, but most importantly, move a wall across to start cutting off this choke point. All right, now let's also send this truck to go pick up that box. Now the AI will start sending out their first few waves here. In order to counter that, we're going to need to get several tanks up and running. But don't worry, we should have all of that nice and soon. Oh goodness, yes, they are sending stuff in towards our base. Lovely, right, tank, it's up to you to defeat these noobs. Luckily, most of the infantry takes damage whilst walking across Tiberium, uh, which does actually make it relatively easy to kill. Oh my god, I just realized that there was a big box on the ground and it was a landmine. I am an absolute idiot for not spotting that. Uh, well, that landmine just blew up a large section of my base, but you know, this is the issues you have to occasionally contend with and will immediately respond by dropping a nuclear bomb on the enemy. The only good news for us, however, is that we're going to be able to retake all of our structures and we're also now snaking our sandbags over towards the enemy centers. Now, as you can see, the enemy has already started harvesting the Tiberium in the middle of the map, but luckily we should be able to cut them off very soon. We just need to snake our sandbags over. It will take a while, but once we have it up and running, all is good. In the meantime, we can still waste a bunch of cash on actually building up an army that we don't really need to use beyond defending these sandbags. But actually, interestingly enough, the reason this exploit actually works, ladies and gentlemen, is simply because of a bug in the AI's programming. The AI doesn't actually comprehend the threat of a sandbag at all. It's just seen as being a neutral item sat in the center of the map. And the AI will only do something about it if they actually want to actively path through using military units. Now, what this means in practice is that basically your sandbags are entirely safe, provided you don't actually put anything near the border of them. Now, in our case, it's about to send over yet another wave of flamethrowers, but don't worry, we should be able to deal with them nice and quickly. And we'll even be able to have our men set themselves up behind a lovely little sandbags barricade. But this will be the last time we actually see the AI attack us because we've now started building the final wall. This is the final line of sandbags, which will perfectly cut off and break our connection with the AI, making it completely inaccessible for them to even get onto our terrain. We can even do this and trap a couple of their little resource collectors inside our lands. And there we go. The AI has now just been cut off from half of the map. They now no longer have a way to path into our territory. And so we'll just give up. We can now turtle for the remainder of the game and harvest the remainder of the map's scarce resources. Now, as I mentioned previously, the AI will only ever break down a barricade provided they actually believe a threat is present there. Be that because there's, say, an enemy unit positioned on it. So provided we effectively leave all of this completely vacant, we are entirely fine. And now that we have the entirety of the map basically sorted, we're just going to spend the remainder of the game getting our economy up and running. As you can see, we don't exactly have the best supply of harvesters, so we're going to desperately require our one existing harvester to basically bankroll our entire economy and then get us up to our second harvester, which can then continue the fantastic operation of trying to get Tiberium back in our accounts. But luckily, we're actually in no rush because the AI simply won't be able to process. You'll notice they haven't sent another attack. And the thing is, they're never going to. They've run out of all of the resources they can actually harvest. You can see their lovely little resource harvesters here are just sat there. They can see that, oh my goodness, look at that. There's a bit of Tiberium, but that's all they can see. Oh, and here comes the enemy forces. Yep, yes, we can quite clearly see that they are trying to do something, but thanks to the limitations of pathfinding, they don't actually have a shot on anything that we have. So they're going to do nothing. Now we have our two harvesters up and running. That's doubled our effective income and the turtling will now continue. This is the medium AI, ladies and gentlemen. This works against the hard AI. It works against the easy AI and to an extent it also works against players. The reason why is because if a enemy player was to select all of his units here and then say right click on our base, the infantry would just kind of walk here and stop. Alternatively, the other ways to screw over the AI is to build massive mazes out of sandbags and have enemy infantry navigate these mazes whilst getting shot at by towers on either side. Yes, you can turn this game into a tower defense game very easily. And the best thing is, it's actually very rewarding to do so. You don't need to worry about the enemy infantry anymore. You don't really need to worry about enemy attacks. All you need to worry about is the fact that your friends are probably never going to play this game with you ever again. Look, I know I've got insufficient funds, but everything is fine and dandy. We have three harvesters now. Look at that. The economy has tripled in size over a very short period of time. Oh, and also now that actually we have the sandbags on the front line, we don't actually need the sandbags in our own borders anymore at all. We can just clear up all of those completely. There we go. Lovely. Oh, look at this. We've discovered even more Tiberium deposits to mine up. Oh, well, isn't that fantastic? Oh, and I reckon there's even more over here. Completely untapped and fantastic. This is exactly what we needed. The economy is saved, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if we are going to ever deploy towers, the way we want it set up is to deploy towers along this wall here because the AI won't ever path to get 
to it because there are no sandbags around it. If we put a guard tower there, the AI would just kind of blow up our sandbags trying to get to the tower. But in all other scenarios, the towers just don't exist to the AI. I have no idea who on earth cleared this when they were designing the game, but yep, that's a feature that they decided would work. Oh, now there is an interesting box here which hasn't been selected, so I'm going to get two of my friends to do it. Oh my goodness, it's money. It's just a box filled with cash. Lovely. And with that extra cash, we can slap down, you guessed it, a Tiberium refinery. Hmm, that's exactly what we're looking for. So we can get ourselves yet another refinery set up and get another harvester getting all of those resources. Wait, why are the civilians just kind of T-posing everywhere? Oh, also, this is the way the remaster game looks ladies and gentlemen and with the hit of a spacebar you can go back to the default graphics this is how the game vaguely looked like to play um, back in 1995 and it's honestly still very nice to look at the game's free to play online as well if you want to play the original version as it was kind of abandoned by the developers but alternatively why play that when you can play this brand new swanky version with actual working steam multiplayer oh isn't that just glorious now as part of my continued effort to screw over the AI what we're going to do is we're going to try and get our infant Oh, I was going to say we're going to try and get our infantry over to that box to steal it, but we actually can't because of how many sandbags we've put in the way. So we're actually going to need to sell some of our own sandbags in order to get our men over there. And as soon as we'll do, we do that, you'll notice the enemy have come to attack. They're now going to start repositioning all of their men to try and get over here. But all we need to do is get the goodie box. Get the goodie box. It's cash. Well done, men. You died a valiant death making sure we got that cash. Oh, and now look at that little truck. It's going to try and get all the way round to the other sandbag, thinking it can go around these borders. Nice try, little Tiberium Harvester. Nice try. You know, we should probably go and blow it up, shouldn't we? Right, go on, go murder it. Ah, oh, here we go. Look at that little red team. This is us blowing up your civilian harvester. Yes, manned by unpaid interns, but still a vessel used by the enemy. And consequently, it's not a war crime to blow up. Or maybe it is. But if it is a war crime, it's one I will make sure to ignore for the time being. Oh, yes, you poor infantries. You just weren't really designed to shoot an unkillable enemy in an inaccessible position, were you? Ah, uh, that'll teach you for having flamethrowers on your backs and violating war crimes. Yes, because look, they're the baddies. No real soldier would use a flamethrower. That's a humanitarian issue. Now what we're going to build is our advanced comm center, ladies and gentlemen. This lovely building gives us the super weapon of a ion cannon. Said ion cannon can then be fired whenever we like to just shred up the enemy base without actually having to access it. This is the true way to play the game. Game. Apparently the AI is now threatening a bullet sandwich, ladies and gentlemen. What the AI fails to comprehend is that there will be no such bullet sandwiches. For we have gained access to, ladies and gentlemen, infinite wealth. Well, now we have 4,000 gold in the bank and basically we can do anything. I mean, what I'm going to just try and do is snake the sandbags mess even more and just really cement the AI into a little corner. And then once they're in that little corner, we can begin Operation Cyberbullying. You know what, I'm going to have a little APC run into the middle of the map to try and pick up that one goodie box which is still left there. All right, let us buy a sandbag and sell a sandbag and now send the Humvee over to get that goodie box. Go, 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 my Humvee friend. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. And as soon as it goes, we're just going to block up that gap. There we go. Go, go, Humvee, go. Grab it, grab it, grab it. We got a free harvester. Oh, God, that was the worst thing we could have got. Right, well, that harvester is going to be very confused now. It's kind of spawned in a pretty poor quality location. Um, I guess we just have it drive around. It's just getting harassed by Apache attack helicopters. Let's just have it walk into the enemy base. Why not? There we go. It's dead now. What an incredible thing we just spent all our money on. And there we go. That's a repair facility also built now which we can slap down just about anywhere let's get this bad boy placed up here because why not and now with having a repair facility we can also buy the mammoth tank this is a huge monstrosity with an ability to basically destroy everything it costs 1500 to make and well we can make an absolute ton of them i must say it is always a little bit concerning when we blow up say one of these harvesters and a perfectly innocent civilian called joe pops out but you know what his fault for standing wrong place wrong time i guess all right let's have an apc rock up and kill him. Sorry, Joe. Nothing personal. Oh, goodness. There's some pretty brutal death animations in this game. I actually wonder what the full list of violations of the Geneva Convention this game has to offer. I mean, of course, you've got your basic stuff like um, use of flamethrowers on civilians, the fact that you're able to use ion cannons to indiscriminately attack people. I'm pretty sure in Red Alert 2 or Red Alert 3, they also have chemical weapons. This game's got it all. And if you can believe it, the original Command & Conquer was actually originally planned to be a fantasy strategy game. That's right. You were actually meant to be battling 
wrestling with wizards and knights instead of tanks and nukes. Certainly a completely different design direction, and one which I'll never fully understand because it certainly would have been good fun to see what would have happened if instead of Apache attack helicopters we had wizards riding around on dragons. Alright, now this is just perfect. We're just waltzing a sandbag right the way into the enemy base. And is the enemy going to react? No. No, they're not. We're just going to build a sandbag right in the middle of everything they have. You know what? We can even build an advanced guard tower right in the middle of their base. It's strong versus all units. Because why turtle and build a tower defense on your own side of the map when you can just deploy it right into the middle of the enemy? All right, let's slap down that guard tower. Wabam. And up and away it goes. Ah, oh, fantastic. It's probably not going to last for that long, but honestly, it doesn't need to. Just look at that bad boy go. Great job. It existed and all it needed to do was simply spot the enemy base a bit for us. And now that we have all of that additional information, we can shoot an ion cannon at this enemy helicopter pad. Goodbye. Ah, it's beautiful. Right now let's build another refinery over here. And you know, we can build another refinery up here as well and just harvest more resources that the enemy really should have had access to and not us. Oh my goodness, this is actually a first and unprecedented time. One of the enemy helicopters is attacking a harvester. I have never seen seen this before, but this is an actual attack by the enemy player towards our base. This is incredible. I honestly don't know what to do. Should I just let him continue doing it? Oh, I know why. It's because I've got a gap here so the Apache attack helicopter thinks it can fly over. Uh, all, you see, all I was missing was a single sandbag right about here, and now they're done for. Now, the AI's resource collection has definitely been hampered due to the fact that they don't actually have access to any resources whatsoever. You see, in our starting areas, we're limited by the fact that we don't have one of these boys, which is just continuously puffing out Tiberium. This is a lovely little blossom tree. There are only a few of them on the map. One over here, one over here, one over here, and I'm pretty sure there's even one up here maybe. And thanks to just this little blossom tree, we're going to be able to have money forever. The AI, however, is soon to run out. So we can actually crank up the game speed to fastest and just resume and watch the money tick on by. Now apparently the AI is trying to bait us into an attack, asking to come and get some. This is of course a bit of an issue for the AI because I don't actually need to send over over units to murder them. I can just yeet this ion cannon over, and that's another enemy structure removed from existence. But many of you will be sat there thinking, well, Spiff, how on earth are you actually going to defeat the AI? They seem to be pretty much impossible to murder. Oh, actually, wait, we've just seen them build their first unit in a very long time. Look at that, it's a flamethrower. My goodness, we haven't seen one of those in years. Such a shame it's about to die anyway. Now, fighting the AI can sometimes be a challenge, but luckily, it doesn't need to be challenging, because what you can do, it's quite I'd simply spam out a bunch of helipads. These bad boys are 1,500 each, and they also spawn in with a fantastical little orca, which would normally cost 1,200. But now this bad boy just comes for free. This basically means a helipad costs $300, you can just slap it down, and other than that, it only costs a bit of power, so we're going to get down an absolute metric ton of helipads, and then surprise ambush the enemy base with relative ease. The AI cannot fight back, they cannot make money, and we've effectively backed them into a situation where they don't even have access to international trade. It's always important to back your enemy into a corner where they can't actually communicate with the outside world like this, so that they can't report on any various war crimes you're committing inside their own land. That's Spiff's handy dictator tip of the day. Just make sure not to quote that in a court of law. Alright, you know what, I just want a bunch of mammoth tanks now, I've decided. We're going to overwhelm the enemy with stupid quantities of mammoth tanks, and that will be all. A bunch of mammoth tanks and the occasional orca helicopter to really cement home just how crazy powerful we are. I mean, orcas are great fun. You can see there's an enemy soldier there. We can just fly over and, well, just evaporate him from existence. Rest in peace. Now, you know what? I would actually be interested in seeing what the enemy base looks like a bit more, so I'm going to shoot an ion cannon down here and blow up one of their turrets. Then use the confusion to place down a guard tower right about here, which gives me some great information about what the enemy base setup is like, and I can now start snaking even more sandbags forward. And then once we get into the center of the base, we can get even more information. Oh my goodness. It would seem that we have accidentally mined out all of the Tiberium on the map. Um, this is certainly quite something. We also have four mammoth tanks ready to go, but with a few more getting prepped. Let's build that guard tower. Oh look, they have Tiberium in the corner, they just aren't using it because the AI is broken it would seem. Perfect, this is exactly what I was hoping for. Oh my goodness, we have so many mammoth tanks now, this is just absolutely stupid. Anyway, we're going to uh, go and pick up a box which is just 
uh, kind of arrived in the middle so uh, let's get rid of one of those sandbags and uh, go grab that box but of course we need to be quick and get that sandbag back up and running oh, it was just money oh right well we've lost uh, one of our little trucks sadly it's going to waltz into the enemy base here um, although one thing you can do with these little trucks is you can get them to run over infantry which is actually surprisingly fun to do so yeah what you want to do is just quite simply crunch over the infantry and they make a nice satisfying uh, squishy sound which is always good fun and then now we're in a great position to just ion cannon this strange underground hand of god which they've got built over there yep and that's gone now you know what, i think we're ready to just rock up with our mammoth tanks which are invulnerable to everything all right mammoth tanks i'm going to bulldoze this wall for you go and have some fun oh yes now the chaos can really begin sadly i accidentally selected a couple of helicopters which have taken a massive sacrificial step which they genuinely didn't need to take uh, but we can provide assistance by sending over even more helicopters now you will notice that basically there is nothing the ai can do we can just bombard their base very easily and then leave all right let's select those mammoth tanks and roll on up mammoth tanks they're big they're strong and they're hard to kill and when they all focus on a structure that structure's dead when they all focus on an infantryman that infantryman is very much dead apparently we blow up one structure and the ai just builds another luckily this is fine for us because uh we can kind of blow them up faster than the ai can build them and there is kind of no counter to the stupidly strong mammoth tank there we go we'll just blow up their base even more that's their main stronghold defeated we just got a couple more of these uh towers to get rid of and then we're in a perfect spot for infinite world conquest ah what splendid news there we go the ai is going to get very close to throwing in the towel here now well done ai you really put up a valiant fight i'd say ah fantastic mission accomplished ai player one is defeated and this is the glorious stats of the match in terms of resources gathered you can kind of see that yes it was slightly on our side in terms of units killed we killed 111 they killed 38 i'm pretty sure almost all of those kills were at the start of the game when i left my base completely undefended in terms of buildings raised we did great um apparently the enemy raised four i'm pretty sure that's because i detonated a small nuclear bomb inside my own base which definitely did set us back a little bit but as you can see this strategy is completely broken and overpowered and i absolutely love it as always if you've enjoyed what you've seen here today feel free to like the video and why not consider subscribing we'd absolutely love to have more of you on board i've played my fair share of rts games over the years and certainly command and conquer holds a nice little sweet spot in my heart whilst i'd say i probably prefer games like empire earth and rise of nations there is still something very very satisfying about the entirety of the command and conquer series i would be interested to know how many of you actually played the original command and conquer so if you did and if you have any strong thoughts and feelings on the remaster hop down into the comment section i'd be very interested to see what your opinions are as always a massive thank you to each and every one of my majestic patrons of course for making these very wild videos all the more possible seriously thank you very much you've allowed us to do some pretty crazy things including say the minecraft server and just buying copious and copious amounts of tea for me you patrons are truly powerful and if you sat there wondering what video you'd like to watch next look no further than this one on screen now hand chosen by myself to be absolutely perfect for you Trust me, if you enjoyed a bit of Command & Conquer, I think this is going to be just your cup of tea. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day and goodbye for now.